So now we are going to be shifting gears a little bit and uh, also look at some, I mean, in basics of graph theory because eventually when we are going to be establishing the network in the context of distributed optimization, that's when graph theory, like tools from graph theory would be very useful, okay. So why do we care about the uh, basics of graph theory? So a typical distributed optimization problem is of this form. So let's say we we want to solve the centralized problem. And for now, let's also assume that the problem is unconstrained. So we want to minimize this function f of x. And this f of x is basically nothing but So it is made up of several decomposable functions f i and you can think that there is a, I mean there are different agents or different uh, entities in the net, uh, network which are essentially trying to minimize the sum of their objective function. This is and a particular example can be when we try and let us say uh, when you train a neural network right, you try and minimize the loss function over your own data sample right. So f i of x essentially in that case or let me not use f uh, the x here. So f i for instance can be defined as when you say I want to minimize uh, the mismatch between the predicted values and the true values for the ith agent and this is this needs to be done over all the data points uh, that ith agent so for all x y sampled from data set d i right. So we want to so even though it is the same objective function analytically. But because it is evaluated on different points, every agent has its own fi, right? And if you want to have a centralized update of the neural network, then ideally what you want is you want to compute the gradient of summation of fi, right? Before you can update the weights of the neural network. So this kind of objective function is pretty common, uh, minimizes sum of, uh, and we are going to largely focus on functions that that either that are either convex, strongly convex, or basically for these fi's or function that satisfy PL inequality, something that we have already looked at. So the objective is to minimize the sum of these objective functions, right, uh, where every individual entity has got its own objective function. But the challenge is, I do not know anything about your, your data set or your object own, basically your own objective function. So I can find a minim, uh, basically an unconstrained minimizer of my own objective, but that may be very different from what you end up finding on your own data, right. And then what is a good value? I mean a good value is something that basically works for all the agents and not just for me or just for you, right? So there must be some kind of consensus between the uh, solutions that I end up finding and you end up finding or anyone or for that matter anyone in the network ends up finding, right? So for in, what we are basically trying to say is there will be one extra that basically minimizes this. However, this cannot be achieved uh, because fi is not known to everyone. So we look at an equivalent problem of this form, minimize. Okay, so we introduce so every agent has its own primal variable now x i. So we minimize with respect to x one, x two, all the way x n, subject to x one equal to x two. Okay, it's the same. Uh, it's the same object optimization problem, right? Because of this particular constraint. Now this centralized optimized optimization problem, we, we can write this as a uh, sort of decentralized optimization problem. So everyone has its own op primal variable. So instead of working with an x which is in let us say Rn, we now have n copies of uh, capital N copies of xi's, all of them are in going to be Rn, right? So R, okay. So everyone has its own copy of uh, what the optimal solution would look like. I am going to be minimizing my own objective function but at the same time I am also give, going to keep a track on what you are doing, you as my neighbor is uh, basically arriving at and that will give me an idea about how everyone else is ev uh, evolving, right. And that way you can try and arrive this, at this x star. So the goal is eventually all these x i's will converge to x star. And if that happens then we are trying to solve the same optimization problem in a rather distributed fashion. Distributed because the computation is going to be distributed at each age. Yeah. 
So you can exchange certain information. So for instance, you can exchange your current XI with your neighbors or you can maybe exchange the gradient of your FI with, uh, with your neighbors at any iteration, but you, you have your own private objective function. So FIs are private. Yeah. So as I said, like you have your own data to work with, right? So you do not want to reveal your private data to any of your like neighbors that way. Yeah, it has to be something has to be conveyed. Otherwise, you cannot achieve that. But then that that means I know about your. No, but then it's, it's like I have a computer, you have a computer, I have my own data set, you have your own data set. So we are doing computations. It's the same dimensional vector and dimensional vector that we are both of us are working with. You are computing gradient on your data set, I am computing gradient on my data set and we are just going to be exchanging what the gradients may look like or let's say what the if I if I were to use my gradient to update, update the neural network, what do my weights look like and your weight like what you are going to be arriving at and we are exchanging that kind of information. So it's not like I'm going to be computing for everyone else's in the net, like everyone else's we have on the net. Right? I'm just going to be exchange like computing on my data, like gradient on my data set and just exchanging the information with the neighbors. So the additional overhead that you get is in terms of uh, communication exchange, right? And but that has to be there even even with the ADMM or the dual decomposition. We had this uh, information exchange either with the centralized aggregator or uh, either I mean or with the uh, neighboring agents, right? So that information sharing has to be there, but it, it won't be directly about the FIs. Okay. So the kind of setup uh, that you have is usually so in this in this context we are going to study graphs, and typically, I mean this is one particular schematic. Let's say this is. something like this. So these black entries are called so nodes. So we are going to be using either nodes, vertices, agents. So all these terms we are going to be using interchangeably. So that and in this so let's let's number these right one two three four. So two is a neighbor of one. Okay. So two lies in the neighborhood set of one. So the neighborhood set, so n sub i, discursive n sub i, this is the neighborhood set of agent i. And what are these uh, quantities here? These are edges, right? edges or connections between different nodes and a presence of edge would indicate that in this case for instance agent 1 can exchange information with agent 2 and vice versa but one cannot for there is no edge between 1 and 3. So one cannot exchange information with 3. Okay, So that is the idea behind placing these edges. So edge, edges indicate connectivity between different nodes. This is an example of undirected graph but uh, I mean for most of this course we are going to be focusing on undirected graphs but you will I mean th there are results which also extend for directed and weighted graphs and things like that. So what is an undirected graph? So when there is no specific directionality between 1 and 2. So for instance, uh, so, this is an ex so this is an example of undirected unweighted graphs. So I will tell you what these terms represent. So undirected because there is no directed edge but from 1 and 2. So it is not like 1 can exchange information with 2 but 2 cannot exchange it with 1. So had there been such kind of directionality uh, then it would, would have become uh, directed graphs. Okay. Unweighted because I mean so we in some sense we are just going to indicate the presence and the absence of the edges between the nodes but sometimes we also want to indicate uh, the weights of these edges. So if you remember the first example about the temperature measurement that we looked at right. 
So every agent updated uh, its value based on the averaging of all other agents in the network. So in that case, agent one, for instance, is going to place a weight to this particular edge, and using that weight, it's it's going to receive its information, right? So there can be uh, let's call it a one two, okay? So a one two, I mean, if it's unweighted graph, we just say that a one two is equal to one if there is an edge. It's zero otherwise, right? So a i j is going to be one if there exists an edge between i and j, and it's zero else. But sometimes you can have uh, certain weights to these edges, and in that case, a i j would have would be a number, let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.3, things like that. So even if there is an edge. You are not going to be assuming it to be just binary kind of uh, quantity, but there is also an edge. So in that case, you would say that it's an undirected weighted graph. Okay. So the set of vertices we are going to be denoted. We are going to be denoting this by this capital curse let cali calligraphic V. So this is the set of vertices. Which in this case is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And all the set of edges we are going to be denoting this by uh, this capital E. Is, is everyone okay with the notations? So, n sub i again is the neighborhood set of agent i. So, what is the neighborhood set of agent 2 in this example? 1, 3 and 4, right? Okay. So that means 2 can exchange information with 1, 3 and 4 and so on. So as I said, uh, I mean there is also you can have some, so in certain cases you can have directionality between these edges. So if I consider the same example, But this time, we also have certain kind of directionality. So you can ex you can assume that one can exchange information with two, but then two won't be able to exchange information with one, and so on. So these kind of graphs are called directed graphs. Okay, and they basically indicate the flow of information. And the flow of information is not bidirectional, it is going to be in, in one particular direction. And if you also have weights on top of these edges, so it is called directed weighted graphs or there is a uh, better term called digraphs, which is basically for directed weighted graphs. But for the interest of this course, uh, we are just going to be largely, we are going to be focusing on uh, undirected graphs. Most of the results that, that are there for undirected graphs with slight bit of modification, you can extend this to directed graphs. So, uh, I think it is much easier to understand it through undirected unweighted graphs in most cases. So, in this case, so what is the difference between, so let us say if I have a graph which looks something like this. Okay, so what do you what can you conclude about this kind of graph? This is one graph, by the way. So the graph is not connected. So what what do we mean by connected? So what do we mean by connected? So there there must exist a path from one node to any other node. So basically, I can reach from 1 to 2, I can reach from 1 to 3, I can reach from 2 to 3, but I cannot reach from 1 to 4, okay. So a graph is connected if there exists a path between any pair of nodes.
So is this graph connected? The one over here? That is connected, right? You can reach from one node to any other node. So this graph is connected while this one is not. Okay, this graph is not connected. Okay. Uh, so why is connectedness important? In let's say in the context of distributed optimization, why why do you think connectedness is important? Yeah, so if when we are trying to sh exchange, let's say the uh, our estimates of what this x star looks like. So I agent one would have its own estimate x1, two would have its own estimate x2 and x3 and so on. But we won't be able to know what the other part of the network is basically arriving at, right? If there is no connection. So connectedness is important in most cases, at least, uh, I mean, in some form connectedness is important. It may not always be connected at all times, but like let's say on an average over a period of let's say 10 time points, there should exist a path for you to be able to go from one node to another. So you need some kind of connectedness to be able to exchange information within the entire network. That's one thing. Uh, so these individual subgraphs, so this is, these are called subgraphs by the way. And these subgraphs are called connected components of a graph. Okay. So in this case, there are two connected components in this graph. If the graph is connected, then there is just one connected component. Okay. What about this graph? Is this graph connected? Uh, so is this graph connected? Let me also number these uh, so that it's also clear. So is this graph connected? Why or why not? Yeah, you cannot go from 2 to 1 for instance. So in directed case, in the directed setting, the definition of connect, I mean connectedness has to go beyond just having an edge, right? It's in, in fact about having a directed edge. So there should always exist a path for you to be able to go from point a node like node i to a node j. And if it's possible for every pair ij, then it's a uh, connected. So in the context of uh, uh, directed graphs, we define something called strongly connectedness or strong connectedness. So not just not just that the entire the underlying uh, undirected graph needs to be connected. I mean the connectivity should be there through these directions. So we call it a strongly connected that way. So you can reach from any node to any other node using these directed edges. Okay. I mean, we don't even talk about in connectedness in that case. We just talk about strongly connectedness of the, the strong connectedness. This is, not it, this is not here. So this graph is not. This graph is, is not strong. Okay. So the next thing is uh, next important concept is degree of a node. So again, if I consider the same example, so what is degree of a node in a graph? Yeah, number of connections are basically size of the neighborhood set. So, so degree of the first node is let us say 1. So, d sub i is basically size of the neighborhood set. Okay, d2 is 3, d3 is uh, 2. So based on this degree, we can also define something called degree matrix of a graph, which is basically a diagonal matrix with the diagonal entries being d sub i. So degree matrix of a graph. So in this case, 
capital D is going to be 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 1 across the diagonals and everywhere else is 0. So, it is a diagonal matrix of the degrees of the nodes. Okay. How do we define degree for now let us say we have an uh, we have a directed graph. So, What is degree of 1? So, how do we define degree of a directed graph? Yeah, so we in fact have a notion of in degree and out degree. So, in degree and out degree. So, in degree would be number of incoming connections and out degree would be number of outgoing connections from a particular node. So, d in 1 in this case is 0, but d out 1 is essentially 1 and so on. Okay. So, then we have this notion of uh, edge adjacency matrix. So, what is adjacency matrix of a graph? So, basically it denotes the connection between any two nodes and in case of this undirected graph for instance, one is connected to two right. So, first of all there are no self edges. So, that means all the diagonal entries are going to be 0. So, so one is connected to two and likewise two is also connected to one right. So, you can see for undirected graphs this adjacency matrix is going to be symmetric. Okay. So, 1 is connected to 2, 2 is connected to uh, 3 basically 1, 3 and 4, 1, 3 and 4. Then 3 is connected to uh, essentially 2, 4, 8. 4 is connected to 2, 3, 5 and 6, so 4 is connected to 2, 2, 3, 5 and 6 and 5 is connected to 4 and 6 is also connected to 4 everywhere else it is 0 and this is your uh, this is your adjacency matrix. Okay. So, for each i so we are going to be denoting as I said we have this thing a i j right. Aij is going to be so every element of this adjacency matrix is Aij. So for each i, what is what is this quantity? Yeah, so d sub i, right? So it's basically degree. So the row sum, in fact, because this matrix is symmetric, the row sum or the column sum both are in fact the degree of the degree of that node, right? Okay, so this is degree of node. Okay, 